Okay. Uh, this one is for uh, user throw away with me eighty nine. Struggling to file a police report. Um, <clears throat> if you are not the poster of this, uh, then you probably want to look in the description for the original post. Um, this young lady has um, essentially said that she is in an abusive relationship. Things have escalated pretty hard. And um, she's trying to figure out what to do. So, throw away with me, 89. <clears throat> God damn, you are in a situation. You are in a situation. Okay, here's the deal. Whether or not you file a police report, I think you should, um, 100%. You need to be ready for the fact that some of the officers will not take it seriously. I have had... I've heard dozens, if not hundreds, of stories where women go to file a police report and the officer doesn't take them seriously, okay? Um, and one of the reasons is because they don't understand the depth of effect that domestic violence has, especially on women. A lot of male cops are like that, and some of the reason is because they are also abusive to their partners. Uh, but that aside, whether or not you do... <clears throat> um, I would give you one specific piece of advice, okay? If he doesn't have the password to your phone or access to your phone, you need to write everything down that happened and keep it in a locked folder or something, uh, somewhere secure, whether it's on your phone, on your iPad, on your laptop, or in a diary that he, he's never going to read. Um, or you should write it down and then keep it with your friend that you had a chat with about it, all right? Now, here's the deal. You need to write this down. <clears throat> and I'm going to tell you why you need to write it down. If you come to me as a police officer, if I'm a cop and you come to me and say, my boyfriend has um, held me down and choked me until my face is purple, I'm going to be looking for all kinds of details. Um, and essentially what you're giving me is your account, okay? Your account is known as... Um, uh, witness evidence okay what you want to do is give that officer a detailed report okay i work in security and the deal is if you don't if you didn't write it down it didn't happen okay so if an incident happens and i file i fail to file a report then it didn't happen okay in terms of the eyes of my superiors and the club owner and all that right if you don't write this down it is as if it didn't happen now, I know what happened. Well, I believe it happened. You know what happened. Um, here's what I want in the report, okay? I want the date. I want the time. I want the people involved. And I want what happened, okay? So here's what you do. Who, what, when, where, why, or how, okay? Who, what, when, where, how, or why. That's what I want in the report, okay? You need to write this down. Um, and one of the reasons you need to write it down is because if something happens in the future again, and I can nearly guarantee you it will, this probably will happen again. Uh, men who engage in abusive behavior towards those they say they love don't usually just have a sudden turnaround, okay? So you need to write it down. And I cannot stress this enough. You need to write it down, Um Save it in the phone of your best friend, the one that you had a chat to. Please do that. Write it down because that is evidence. And what will happen is when this happens again, if I want to say if, but I, I'm, you know, I feel called to say when. If you don't file the police report now and this happens again and you get scared for your life proper um, and then you file a police report then and then you say, well, incident A happened a while ago, they're going to go, well, give me the details and you're not going to be able to recall it because memory, especially for prosecuting attorneys is fucking terrible. Okay. Your memory is terrible. There've been experiments where they can implant memories in people. Um, and witness testimony is the weakest, um, evidence in court. Okay. So you need to write it down. Uh, the best of your recollection, you need to save it with your friend. Um, and then, but make, just make sure to tell her, 
do not go ahead and give this to the police without my consent. Um, she she needs to not be the hero in this situation. Now, if you don't feel that she can hold with you, then you need to keep it yourself somehow. Okay, but it needs to be written down. Now, in terms of like, I'm just reading this. I'm 20s female. I've been with my husband 30 for approaching a decade now. We've had a bumpy relationship, but have two kids from it, which are everything. Okay, here's the deal. If those kids are boys, they will treat the women that they say they love in the same way they see their father treating them. Make no mistake about it. This will happen, okay? Now, I don't want to put that burden on you. I don't want to put the burden of your children's behavior on you, but it's just the truth. Sons mimic their fathers, especially in terms of the way their fathers treat their wives, okay? Because that's how they learn what love is. And the problem is that the same person that's doing all the damage is also doing all the love. He's doing all the love. It's the same reason women stay in abusive relationships because he is the only one that makes them feel the way they want to feel, okay? If your kids are daughters, they will see the way that he treats you. Even in the little contemptible moments and the disrespect and the cutting you off in sentences and the interrupting and the shouting and the physical abuse as well, they will have the rule in their mind that this is what love is and this is just what I should expect because no girl feels better than her mother, right? And so the idea that I am better than my mother and I deserve better than my mother doesn't cross many women's minds, okay? They will accept what they see. Monkey see, monkey do. Okay, so um, when things are good, they are good. And that is the problem. When things are good with a man like that, they are so good. It's called the cycle of abuse. Okay, you, ne- you probably need to look at some literature that um, just Google the cycle of abuse. And you will find that just after he flips the lid, just after that, he goes back into caretaker mode of you and he tries to make you feel comfortable. He treats you real nice. He's really awesome to you. He gives you everything. But then the cycle starts again. Okay. And it will. It, this will happen again. I hate saying that because I just, I feel for you. I've, I've seen this situation so many times. Okay. Um, when they're not though, there have been physical moments in the past. Now that to me tells me that he's gotten physical and you're downplaying it. It's one of the things that uh, victims of abuse do. They downplay the uh, actions of their partner because A, they don't want to demonize the partner because they love him and and you do love him. So I understand that. I'm not discounting that. Um, but the second reason they do it is because they don't want to admit to themselves that they have been uh, violated and treated like this. It's one of the very common factors in sexual abuse victims as well. They sometimes they can't come to terms with the fact that they have been used and thrown away against their will. And so because of that, they fail to file the police report and they redefine it in their own lives and they compartmentalize it. All right. Um, my husband held me down by my throat to the point of my face going purple. That's fucking incredible. That is incredible that this man could do that. Um, it, it, it boggles my mind. I understand it and I've seen it, you know, and it, if there's one thing that gets me hot under the collar and gets my temperature up, it gets my, um, uh, my adrenaline pumping and it increases my cortisol levels. Um, and it lowers my fine motor skills is when I see a man hitting a woman and I've seen it. I'm a, I'm a bouncer at pubs and clubs, right? Sometimes. And, you see men getting aggressive with women and all all the bets are off. It, nearly every single guy in that club will jump in and, and punch him, which is, you know, you don't want that. But that is very, very intense, the fact that he's done that. So that that's an assertion of his power over you. But um, I told him to leave, but he ended up coming back and I left with a friend for a few. So let me ask you this question. Have you essentially left your children in the care of this man? If that's the case... Um, look, I understand why you've done it, but it's still very scary to me that those children are under the care of this man. Um, and yeah, I'll just leave that there. I know it sounds so dumb, but I've been with the man since before I graduated high school. I do feel like I love him. Look, I'm not denying that you love him. You know, there's many women that love a devil. There's many women that love a man with so many demons in his heart. 
but he didn't choose those demons. And I guarantee you this guy did not choose to have the, the cycle of violence perp- uh, perpetuated in his life. He didn't choose this. Doesn't justify it, and it doesn't make it right, and I still feel no sympathy for him. He needs to sort his shit out, right? He needs to sort his shit out. Um, you can help in certain ways, but he needs to take responsibility for this. Um, I do feel like I love him. I don't want to deny him ability to see his kids. Look, I understand that. But at the end of the day, a man makes a choice. Okay. A man makes a choice and he will be held responsible for the consequences of that choice. And if that means that he doesn't get to see his kids and he has to modify his behavior, um, because you've got to remember, if you go against him and get him kicked out of the house or whatever it is, or you separate and he goes into combat mode, he's going to manipulate those children against you. Okay. It will happen. And even if it doesn't, I always make the assumption that it will. I always look for the worst possible outcome in any situation so that I'm prepared for it and everything else is gravy, okay? There is a very, very good chance that he will use his kids against you to try to manipulate you to not make a police report and not get lawyers involved, okay? Um, You will be subject to manipulation, guilt, gaslighting, all of it, okay? Um, So you need to be prepared for that. Now... I'm so scared to try to be an adult without a partner for the first time in my life. But a part of me is also excited to think of a life without the nonsense I deal with at home. Look, I totally understand that you have two conflicting thoughts in your head at each other. I understand that. Um, Yeah. Um, But part of me is... I kept repeating to her that I could not call the police tonight and that I will do it tomorrow. I'm afraid tomorrow... Um, that I won't end up calling and things will just fall back like they usually do. They will. Except now it's awkward because a friend is involved. Look, this is going to happen again and it will probably get worse. I hate saying that to you. I hate it. But it will get worse. It's just the truth. Like, I'm not going to give you sugar with your truth if the truth is going to save your life. Um, now, here's what I would do, okay? Uh, to, to sum up in the video, here's what I would do. Oh, I say this every time. Write down what you want in a relationship. Not in any rela- not in just this relationship, but in any relationship. Write down what you want in a man. Write down what uh, you're prepared to give that man. Not him, the man you're currently with, but any man that you're in a relationship with. What are you going to give him? What are you prepared to give him? And the fourth one is write down the woman that you want to be in that relationship, okay? Then on top of that, um, you have to write down the line that if he crosses, all bets are off and you go straight to the cops and you move the fuck out or whatever it is, okay? You need to have a line that you draw that if he crosses that line, if for me personally, it's if he gets physical again. <coughs> there's nearly a guarantee, there's nearly a 100% guarantee that he's going to get physical again, okay? Um, and so you need to be ready um, to have your, your shit packed and get got the fuck out, okay? Um, sorry for the sound that's a helicopter above now um the other thing i would say is um get a support network around you um and keep those friends close seek wisdom in those who love you and have wisdom okay i hope you have those people in your life seek wisdom from them also um what i would do is when you feel like you can have a chat to him, have a chat to him. But if you feel unsafe doing that, don't do it. There's a lot of people that, especially men, that will not admit their responsibility and they will not admit that they are they are the cause of the problem. Okay? Now, that isn't to say that you're innocent because I don't know. I don't know. But it doesn't matter what you did. Putting hands on you is inexcusable. That there, no, there is no excuse for this. Um, and so... Yeah, look, I wish you all the best. I really do. And um, write things down. You need to write down what happened. Even if you don't file a police report, you need to write it down and give it to your friend or give it to someone you trust, maybe your mother, okay? Just write it down on a letter and then give her that letter so it's ready to give to the police if you need to. Um, Look, I wish you the best. I know I've been rambling in this video a bit and I do apologize for that, but um, it's really important that you write this stuff down so that it's evidence, not just a story, okay? Okay. Listen, I wish you the best. Good luck.